Broadcasting around the world on the internet 24 hours a day at www.odysseytv.org. This is Odyssey Instructional Television, a program of the San Bernardino County Regional Occupational Program. Welcome back, everybody. Jim Hall, you ought to know, with another show, and we're in Phelan, California, Forever Wild Exotic Animal Sanctuary. The tigers are here. There's going to be a whole lot more venomous snakes. They're all here, too. In fact, you can be here as part of the tour. You can actually come out here in Phelan and see these exotic animals. That means, Caden, you get a chance to come out and see the tigers, lions, bears, snakes, and so much more. It's all here. Forever Wild Animal Sanctuary. You can go to the number four, everwild.org, if you want to check their website. Stay with us, everybody. It's a great show right here from Phelan, California, in the high desert, simply because, like with every show, Caden and I are here, ready to go, and you ought to know. Stay with us. Great show coming up. Welcome back, everybody. Jim Hall, you ought to know. In a place we have been before, we're in, we couldn't say it out loud before. We really didn't want to advertise, but <laughs> now we want to let everybody know we're in Phelan, yes. California, here in the high desert, in uh, a unique place. Joel, introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Joel, and uh, this is uh, Forever Wild Exotic Animal Sanctuary. <laughs> now, what is an exotic sanctuary? We've been here before. I know why it's here, but what is it doing here in the high desert? Uh, what we do is we provide permanent homes for uh, displaced, abused, uh, exotic animals. Um, a lot of them are confiscated through Fish and Game, USDA, uh, or local animal agencies. Now you got into this how because we know a little bit of the story, but let's refresh for people watching. And then there's a lot bigger story to tell here about this event. Yeah. Um, we uh, uh, started this uh, back in 97. And um, we've been here uh, ever since. I actually moved up here from uh, Huntington Beach area. And uh, I grew up with exotic animals. Uh, my grandparents actually had pet stores back in the late 60s, early 70s. And uh, that has always been an interest of mine, uh, is, you know, dealing with the animals. And um, we, you know, started doing educational stuff, uh, you know, at first. And we just started getting phone calls after phone calls about, you know, displaced animals and, um, you know, the places that they just needed places to home these animals. Well, tell us uh, what you have here on this facility. I saw the horses. That was real easy. <laughs> and I know there's tigers. So how many tigers we got? And then what else do we have here? Uh, we have 10 tigers. Uh, we have two black leopards, three cougars, five African servals, uh, an African lion, uh, bobcats, lynx, uh, we have alligators, cobras, mambas, um, yeah, about, about 70 different types of venomous reptiles. Uh, so it's, it's all, you know, quite, quite a few animals. <laughs> well, I know that the animals that are here, do you have room, first off, for more animals right at this point? Um, at this point right now, um, we've been, I, I get calls every single day. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of the animals uh, that have been coming in, we've actually helped, you know, place them in other facilities. Um, but, you know, just recently we've taken in a white tiger from Vegas. Um, so it's, it's, right now I'm pretty full on cats. Um, I'm at my limit right now. Uh, the reptiles, uh, you know, I've a lot of room for the reptiles, so, um, and that's a common occurrence. I get weekly phone calls from Fish and Game uh, about illegal 
animals that they've confiscated. So Now, when these uh, illegal animals, venomous animals to be specific, when you take those in, are they yours then permanently? Uh, yeah, they, they, are, they are housed here. Well, actually, a lot of the animals uh, are housed as evidence for a certain amount of time, but then they are turned over to Forever Wild. Um, so uh, we've, we've placed a few uh, different zoological uh, institutions, um, but unfortunately a lot of them, you know, uh, they stay here or they get euthanized. It's one of the two. All right, well, this facility we happen to be in right now has very much changed from when I was here about a year and a half ago. We actually, you were in a facility. In fact, you were living in what? Uh, I was living in a double-wide mobile home uh, that was falling apart, and uh, a lot of in here uh, was actually the reptiles and everything. It was were kept in a uh, three-car garage uh, that was converted to what I needed. <laughs> so uh, things have changed dramatically around here. Yeah, now things have changed. We were out here in the early part. The rainy season was going, but it was lit up 24 hours a day out here. And of course, all the volunteers. We have to talk about that because you were uh, uh, very fortunate to have uh, TV, ABC TVs. Extreme Home Makeovers come out and they did not only a makeover of the home, this incredible sanctuary we happen to be in right now where a lot of these, take a look here, this is the venomous room where we're in now, correct? Reptiles are all here. Yep, yep, these are all the uh, venomous reptiles, uh, various types, different types of rattlesnakes here, uh, cobras, gila monsters, um, there's, uh, uh, you know, we actually have our back room as well, that is, you know, these are the animals that we have on display right here. Um, but like I said, you know, with constant, you know, getting animals constantly through fish and game, um, there is, um, uh, you know, just more and more animals coming in all the time. Well, tell me about that experience with getting involved with the people from Extreme Home Makeover. What was that like and that whole deal? <laughs> I mean, they sent you away for a week. But then you came back and they ordered the bus moved and there you were. Well, yeah, tell me about it. Was, it was, um, I, I don't know if I can describe it exactly. Um, it was very overwhelming. Um, I mean, it just, your, your whole life has changed, you know, in, in seven days, um, you know, from, from uh, the way that we ran things um, to now. And it's, um, you know, it's been a complete godsend, you know, I mean, I can't say enough thank yous to all the people that were here. Um, I still haven't got to meet everybody. You know, I, I have people that come by here all the time and, you know, I did this, I did that. You know, um, a couple of elderly women that have come by and said that, you know, they were just out here handing coffees out to people. So it's, it's you know, it's it's real heartwarming, you know, to, to see these people, to meet them. Um, you know, it's, it's been a, a heck of an experience. Well, we were out here. The mess tent used to be about a quarter mile down the road there. They actually had a full cafeteria set up. But we're going to be back. You're going to see some of the animals, uh, the tigers that are out here, some of the black leopards he mentioned, and a lot more. And you're going to take a look more at this facility right here at Forever Wild. We're in Phelan. In fact, there's a phone number if people want information. Yes, it's 760-868-2755. Uh, all right, that's the phone number. Stay with us simply because we're going to help educate you on this one. Forever Wild is where we are. You ought to know. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. Jim Hall, you ought to know in Phelan, California, here in the high desert. If you don't know where we are, is there a website, Joel, people can go to? Yes, it's uh, f uh, the number four everwild.org. Right. For the number, <laughs> yes. for everwild.org. And yes. you get all the information there. Yes, you know, we've got all the information there, and um, uh, we're constantly trying to update it, so it's uh, everything should be on there that everybody needs to to know. Well, look where we are now. We're out in this beautiful patio area. Yeah. 
greenery out here, the artificial turf, I'm guessing, yes, right yes, there. Yes, so yes. that stays perfect year round. <laughs> yes, stays perfect year round, and no rabbits to contend, you know, to contend with. So uh, it's it's nice. It's an area that we can bring kids out on. Uh, we can um, uh, show them some of the reptiles that we have, uh, some of the birds, things like that. You know, and they can uh, relax on that. So well, I uh, understand now when the kids come out that the first and second graders, kindergartners, first, second graders, third graders, they get to handle some of the garter snakes and some of the uh, non-venomous, but when you get yeah. the 6th graders and the 7th and 8th graders, they get to handle the rattlesnakes? Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, no, there's, there's uh, a lot of the animals that we have here, uh, some of the non-venomous stuff, you know, there's, uh, I, I like to have the kids to be able to touch those, uh, to appreciate them, um, you know, same with the tortoises uh, and, and, you know, the birds as well. Um, so they get, they get very, very close, closer than you ever will at, at any other place. So, um, you know, and it, it, they can connect with it. They can, they can get very close and uh, admire these animals at a very close distance. Well, we're going to take a little bit of a look around here. This behind us, you see the horses back there. Now, those, nothing out of the ordinary about horses, but you do have horses here. Yes, yes, we do have horses. Um, actually, they all have been rescues. Um, we've uh, uh, got two of them uh, quite a few years ago, and then just recently, um, uh, from somebody losing their home, uh, couldn't take care of the other two horses, so we took those in, and we're trying to find homes for them. Um, but you know, with with this economy, and unfortunately, that could be a while. Well, here we sit on how many acres right here? Um, this uh, the compound itself is on about an acre and a half um, of land. Uh, the total land uh, on the property is eight and a half acres. Uh, so we're there's a lot of things that we're going to try to do is make little trails and and. Things things like that for people that they can um, actually walk around and see what the the natural you know foliage and the natural habitat is around here and uh, make things for you know quail and and uh, the natural animals that are around here as well. Well and you have some things that aren't so natural. Yes. Ryan if you kind of pan back over this way we've got exotic birds over here? Yes yes we have uh, several Amazon parrots and macaws. Uh, these are all been uh, birds that you know people could not uh, keep for one reason or another and um, uh, yeah we've had them for quite a few years now so uh, we've got one that's uh, actually a very famous bird she's been on the uh, Johnny Carson show um, she's about 38 years old she uh, says about 1300 different words and um, uh, she's she's very very sweet so uh, the, the kids love to see her um, they love to uh, she she you know, sings, she sings opera, she'll um, uh, do car alarms, she'll do fire trucks, um, you know, quite, quite a few things. <laughs> 1,300 words, that yes. seems like a fairly large vocabulary for yeah, one of their it's, it's a pretty large vocabulary for any bird, um, but yeah, she's, uh, she's very, and, and she loves, she does it just for the emotion of it, you know, she's, she's a very emotional bird, um, a lot of birds like to, you know, have treats and things like that for saying something, uh, she does it for the pure enjoyment of it. All right, well, take a look here, we've got running water, this is yeah. something that was not here before, obviously yes. created yes. during <laughs> this environment here, but very beautiful. Yes, yes, no, this is uh, something Something I wish was a little closer to my house so I could hear it at night, uh, make me go to bed a little bit easier. Um, but uh, yeah, just this little stream right here has uh, uh, introduced a lot of local wildlife. We get uh, Cooper's hawks, red tail hawks, quail um, that come in here every single day uh, to get you know drinks of water, and um, uh, you know it's something else for visitors to to see and appreciate while they're here. Well, here's something they're going to appreciate. Let's walk right this way. We're out here in the patio area. Uh -huh. In fact, we're not far from where we've talked about the tigers. They're here. Yes, yes. They're actually housed yep. here. Yep. What is right over in here, Joel? Come on over, Ryan. Let's take a look. What's in here? Uh, these are um, different alligators that have been confiscated by uh, several uh, animal control facility, you know, uh, places out here in the high desert. Uh, actually, three of these have come from Hesperia alone. Um, a couple of them have been, you know, people that have turned them over to us from Phelan, from Victorville, from Apple Valley. Um, unfortunately, we get a lot of alligators um, because it's something that is very easy to get, and people just don't realize what is entailed with keeping them. 
these seem at the size where they would be just a little bit too big to start keeping at home. So this is about yes. the time they turn them out. Yes, yes. It's almost every single one of them is, is right at the three-foot mark. All right, let's go right back out here by this fountain. Take a look here. The exotic bird's back here. Joel, we're headed for the tigers next. Are you ready for this? Oh, yeah. How many back there? Uh, we have ten tigers, um, an African lion, uh, two black leopards, three cougars, five servals, uh, two bobcats, a lynx. Uh, I think that's it. <laughs> All right. Well, we've got the entire staff from Odyssey Television here, and even Caden is back here. And I would, I was hearing just a few minutes ago, the staff was determining who was getting fed to the tigers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Stay with us, everybody. You ought to know. We'll find out coming up next. Welcome back, everybody. Jim Hall, you ought to know, and we are actually in the sanctuary of the sanctuary itself. This yeah. is where the tigers are, Joel. Yep, yep. This is where the tigers are. Um, uh, most people, as you can see back over here, they can get to a, a certain uh, distance, you know, next to the cats, and they can see them very clearly. Uh, obviously, we're a little closer than <laughs> than than the public gets. Um, but but you're, you're very comfortable with the cats and them with you, yes? Oh yeah, yeah. There's. I, I'm very comfortable with it, but uh, you know, I still take precaution too because these are wild animals, and always uh, will be wild. They'll animals. always be wild animals. That's that. Our our biggest problem with some of the animals that we get here is, you know, people have bought this, you know, uh, tiger cub, lion cub, and thought that if they raise it like their dog. It's going to be like their dog, and that is not what happens. A wild animal is certainly a wild animal for the yes. uh, duration of its life, no matter how long you've had it as a... As a that's, that's true. That's true. Okay, this one's name is what? Uh, this is Mishka. Uh, Mishka, is, uh, uh, she'll actually be a year old in September. Uh, we got her from a uh, facility that was in Michigan. Uh, they bought her as uh, a photo cat, and uh, they were uh, trying to do photos at fairs and things like that. Um, unfortunately, their, or well, fortunately for her, uh, their business wasn't doing very well, and um, she um, uh, came to live with us. Um, a lot of the cats that we get, unfortunately, are declawed. Uh, she was luckily enough that she hasn't been, so she has all her all her hooks, and um, she's just the way she was when she was born. So Yeah, and we have seen, uh, when we were here about a year and a half ago during the first show, before the makeover, we were here yeah. for that as well, but be, during that show you had one that uh, had been declawed, as it were, yes. and that does a lot of damage. It does a lot of damage. There's um, uh, a, a lot of people don't even realize exactly what it does, um, but it's actually cutting off the very last digit, like of, of your fingers, yeah. and a lot of the ligaments and stuff that hold that uh, the the foot, you know, anatomy to the pad, which the pad is like a shock absorber, is eliminated. So uh, what happens is the, pa the pad starts to atrophy forward, and the bone is actually driven into the ground every time that they yeah. walk. A lot of damage. Yeah. Let's go right down this way. Joe, I saw you down that way, but I'm going to come right down here real quick. I don't want a shot of him. <laughs> and this is Jade? This is Jade, yes. Uh, Watch this here. <laughs> Jade's going to come right up, Joel, and uh, give you a little oh, talk. Yeah, yeah she, she loves men. She she loves me. This is my uh, uh, my girl, definitely. Um, she uh, we actually got her uh, September tenth of two thousand one, uh, and um, she has been uh, uh, with us ever since. She actually came from a tiger breeder that didn't want her uh, because she didn't have the the correct coloring. Um, so. Um, uh, you know, God knows what would have happened to her, right. you know. Well, let's move on. How many of the animals do you have that have been abused in some way? Other than decline, which they think is a natural process, we can decline them, they'll be safe, but it's not that case. Yeah, no, no. Decline does not make a cat safer, and there's actually a higher bite um, occurrence with declawed cats than non-declawed cats. Yeah. Um, but um, a, a lot of the cats that we uh, have here, we've got a couple of them that were actually 
physically abused. Uh, a lot of them, uh, like Blue here or Czar next to us, uh, were circus cats. Yeah. And um, they were actually living in, in enclosures that were only four feet wide, four feet tall, and six feet long. Basically uh, giving them enough room to stand up and turn around. Stand up and turn around. That's, that's what the USDA requires, and uh, that was basically all that was given to them. And they're living in a space here that is what? Uh, well, these are these cages right here are uh, uh, 400 square foot. They're 20 by 20s. Um, a lot of the cats, you know, for for a wild cat, that would absolutely be way too small. Uh, for these cats that have lived in confined spaces, um, it's enough for them. And um, to actually, you know, take one of these cats out because a lot of the cats we can walk. Um, uh, some of the big males, the circus cats, they do not even want to come out of their enclosure. That is home. That is where they feel safe, and they don't even want to do that. All right, we have a white tiger. You mentioned that yes. one. Let's yes. get right over that direction. Okay. Camera's going to be with us here in just a moment, but <laughs> as we head over that way, describe this white tiger and how you got this one. Uh, this is, uh, her name is Princess Diana, and uh, she actually came from a uh, uh, Vegas uh, show, and um, she was... Uh, Never abused, um, uh, you know, taken very well care of. Unfortunately, because of the economy and stuff, um, they just, they couldn't house her anymore. Um, so uh, the gentleman brought us uh, Diana uh, just the other day, and um, she's still a little bit nervous. Um, you know, she's got a couple of marks on her from uh, being transported. They get nervous inside the transport cages, and, uh, well, she's rubbed up a little bit on her nose, and, um, uh you know, that, that's just a, a typical thing. It looks worse on a white tiger than it does any cat. Well, she's got running water in her pen yes. here now. She yes. Is this going to be her comfort pen? Is this where she'll be housed now? Uh, for right now it is because she, she had a pool where she was before. Um, so we're trying to make it as normal as possible for her just to where she'll feel at home. Um, but this cage in here, this is what uh, Extreme Makeover had built for us. And um, uh, we shift the cats from one cage. You know, she'll be in here for a week or so uh, until she uh, settles down. And then we'll take her out. We could put Mishka in here. We could put Jade in here. Uh, we, we've, you know, changed the cats out consistently. Um, so they all get a, a little bit of the water and uh, relax in it. All right. Well, you got a little bit of a taste of it today. We're going to have to come back. But we're going to show you some pictures. All during this show, you'll be seeing the tigers and all the different things that are here. And we hope you'll have the opportunity. We're going to come back and talk with Joel as we wrap up the show about the hours and how you can come out and see all this right here in feel. And simply because you ought to know. Stay with us. We'll be right back to wrap it up. <laughs> Well, hey, everybody, that's going to put the wraps on another show. Jim Hall, you ought to know, along with Caden and Joel Almquist out here at Forever Wild. Joel, give us the phone number again. Uh, it's 760-868-2755. Now, groups and organizations, people, if they want to come out and see, can they do that? Yes, yep, yep. You can come out and just give us a call, and we'll set it all up for you. All right, again, the phone number? 760-868-2755. And the website where people can find you online. Uh, it's the number four everwild.org. All right, everybody. He's entranced here by the white tiger and all the tigers back in here, so he's going to get a tour, private tour here in a moment. In fact, Caden, you want to do some feeding? No, we're kidding. He's not going to do that. Stay with us, everybody. The next show promises to be a great one, but not as exciting or as forever wild as this one, simply because you ought to know. See you next time, everybody. Say bye. <laughs>